the next day, the law was signed. Mm -hmm. We had never had an inheritance law for women who married under customary law to inherit properties of their husbands. The female lawyers passed that law, wrote that law, act, we took it to parliament, and we didn't put 5,000 women, but every morning they came to a session and the hall was filled with women who were just sitting there looking. <laughs> and every morning they came, we were just sitting there and just looking. Eventually they said, this silence is something for us. They passed the law. <laughs> Currently, our work includes looking at some crucial policy documents that tend to affect women to see how we can push it. Because you see, we will continue the struggle. The struggle is at different levels. Whilst you have the activism, it's not every day that you want to go in the street to protest. I am protesting now. I don't intend that my daughters will protest. How do we ensure that our daughters don't get in the street? We have to ensure that there are laws and policies protecting their rights. So those are things that um, we're currently doing in the work that we do. We're also doing a lot of leadership skills training for girls trying to make the young girls come to understand that I intend to get in, involved in politics five years from now. When I step into the political scene, I will expect that some young girl will come and step into my shoes. So those are some of the things that um, we're currently doing. Thank you. Thank you. Mit einem Blick auf die Uhr würde ich jetzt ganz gerne Ihnen die Möglichkeit zu Fragen geben, auch vor dem Hintergrund vielleicht, dass diese Geschichte mit dem Nicht-Bekanntwerden dieser, ähm, dieses Engagements der Frauen schon was ganz Außergewöhnliches ist. Mir wäre es am liebsten, wir könnten sammeln, damit wir nicht zu viel Zeit verlieren. Fangen wir mal bei Ihnen an. Können Sie vielleicht aufstehen, damit alle hören? Ich würde gerne über die Präsidentin was erfahren, weil da jetzt gar nichts kam, sowohl über den Hintergrund als auch was sie jetzt tut. Ähm, ste wie stehen Sie zu dem, was die Präsidentin jetzt macht? Ich weiß da auch nichts davon. Ist das eine Zusammenarbeit eher oder müssen Sie da als Opposition arbeiten? I would be interested in, um, in like how has how has men changed their attitude towards women now, like after this process and during this process? And how has um, like the kids' attitude, like the kids that were fighting on the street, like the boys' attitude, how has they changed, or how is the attitude towards them? And like I also, I'd say they are victims. And um, like it's like what happens to them? Gibt's noch eine dritte Frage, die wir gleich ab ja? Ich habe eine Frage bezüglich äh, Wipsen, also die Organisation von äh, Lima Mekbori, ähm, ob die sich auch in anderen Ländern engagieren oder nur in Li äh, Liberia oder auch ob es andere Länder gibt, die in Afrika, wo ja auch Krieg herrscht, äh, ob da auch gearbeitet wird von der Organisation. Well, the president um, is doing a great job. Um, Liberia is at a very difficult place. 14 years no running water, no road network, no electricity. We have 3.3 million people. Currently in Liberia, there are only 20 professional Liberian doctors. 20, two, zero. Every other doctor that is in Liberia is sent by foreign countries. So we've taken doctors from Cuba, from Nigeria, from the United States, any doctor that comes, we take them. But for Liberian practicing doctors, only 20. This is just to show you how terrible things have gotten. And this woman is in a position where um, I would never have loved to be. Because anyone who comes after 14 years of war, whether man or woman, we have a tough time. But one of the things that she's been able to do is really to get, we were deep in debt. So she has gotten some of those debts cleared. The economy is growing. For the first time in the history of Liberia, you have a very high enrollment rate of girls in school. And then they've now started a free education policy for primary schools. 
But also some of the challenges we have is that Liberia has the worst maternal mortality rate in the entire world. So in this day and age where women would go and give birth and they would come out with their babies, 96 out of a thousand births in Liberia die. So that's almost like um, 10%, yes, or it's more than that. So out of every thousand births, you have almost 100 women dying at birth or when they go to give birth. That's, that's it. We also have a very high rape Rape has increased. So this is um, to your question, how the men are taking the women. Young babies as young as nine months old are being raped. So maybe this is like a backlash for the powerful women's movement that we have. We don't know. Armed robbery is on the increase. It's, it's so bad. Communities are still struggling from issues of armed robbery. And this is closely linked to the fact that the government really doesn't have the resources to cater to the needs of these ex-child soldiers. So they are still roaming the streets, they are forming gangs. So these are some of the outcomes of war. My relationship with the president, I just wanted to finish with that one. <laughs> My relationship with the president, we have a very um, cordial, friend, I, I won't call it friendship, um, before people told her that I didn't support her and I wasn't um, a big fan of hers. <laughs> and so we were not very close. But she went to New York and she saw this film mm -hmm. and came back to Liberia and said, I didn't know that you had done such a great work because she was never in the country during the war. Um, so now she supports the girls project that we do. Um, she, we finished the project and last week they called my office to say that the president is giving us $40,000 to continue the girls project. But also she has a lot of respect for the work that I do. Um, last time she and I spoke, she said, come home, I have a political appointment for you. And I said, I'm coming, but that is not going to happen. What do I do? My work now is not just concentrated in Liberia. We are working in Sierra Leone. We just came back last. Sometimes I forget the time <laughs> because I'm in different time zones at different time. Last week we were in the Ivory Coast, um, Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire is supposed to go to elections soon. And so we took a group of women from around West Africa to Cote d'Ivoire because this, they are the first country after Liberia to have a woman who's standing as president. So we went to show solidarity to her and to encourage women to vote. We also work in Nigeria, um, in the Niger Delta region, where they have the oil conflict with women trying to get them to see how they can also start a movement that would help the communities get some of what they need. We do a lot of networking with our different colleagues in different parts of Africa. Now we've gotten a request to go to Zimbabwe next year to start working with um, one of the advocacy groups there in Zimbabwe. So hopefully next year we will go there. So it's not just Liberia, but also we do a lot of cross-continent work on issues of um, the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 and 1820 advocating for the implementation at different levels. Um, I think I answered your question on the child soldiers. And they, they, I mean, their lives have not improved. I say the average Liberian have probably gone 15% out of their problems. The ex-combatants, maybe 2%. Yeah, I think it's Und dass diese Stimme zählt, das ist die Arbeit, die sie geleistet haben, so dass sie tatsächlich in der, in der Lage war, dann zu handeln. Vorher war das nicht möglich. Das ist der eine Punkt. Der andere Punkt, was mir unheimlich beeindruckt, ist, dass sie geschafft haben, die Trendstrukturen, die in der Gesellschaft existieren, umzuwandeln. Und sie 
sogar zu benutzen, indem sie den Imam oder doch der Bischof irgendwann für ihre Stimme äh, sprechen kann. Das ist der zweite Punkt. Der dritte Punkt, warum man geschweigt hat darüber, denke ich, was sie geschafft haben, ist tatsächlich für das männliche Machtpotenzial in dieser Welt gefährlich. Sie haben gezeigt, Frauen sind in der Lage, eine Regierung zu kippen. Auf ganz friedliche Weise. Das wollte ich sagen. And she, and she's very right because what we've seen in many countries after our movement is that every time women try to step out, there is a serious clampdown on their activities. Um, in Guinea Conakry, women came out along with some of the men to protest the military government. What they did was to fire in the crowd, shoot in the crowd. They killed 157 people that day, but beyond that, disgusting images you can find on the internet of soldiers running after these women, bringing them down and raping them publicly. So afterwards, they went from hospital to hospital and they asked women, if you say you were raped, they take you out and they execute you. So right now in Guinea, you have a movement of women that has virtually died. No one wants to talk about political issue. So these are some of the backlashes. In Zimbabwe, some of our sisters who started protesting have been put into prison for almost one year. And, well, the Mugabe government say they want to overthrow him. So these are some of the backlashes that we've seen happening in different communities as a result of women uprising. But it's good because right now the world can now see that armless women have power. And if they, they weren't, um, if women weren't powerful when they step out in their numbers, the governments would not be jittery. You know, so someone asked me, do you think we need another Beijing? We need to have another world conference of women. And my answer is no. We don't need a world conference of need women. We need a world protest of women at the UN. I have one sister from Zimbabwe also who is um, one of the CNN heroes, she'll be honored. She said, I am tired with workshops. If it is Mugabe that we want to deal with, let's get in the plane, go there, deal with him, and move on. That is what women need to do now, and I think that's where we are coming. Thank you.